<laughs> I have been looking for this. I have really needed these lately. Um, I have been very sick and that is why there has not been an upload on this channel for a while. But welcome back if you are here to the channel and, and another episode of Horror Corner with Jess Starling. I'm Jess and today, even though I know it's a little bit late, um, because I was sick and non-functional um, for most of the last week leading up to Christmas, um, we are going to take some time today to talk about holiday horror. Um, and we're also going to go into a little bit of the future of Horror Corner with Jess Darling. Um, and a little bit of, you know, kind of what I want this channel to be about in the future um, for 2023. Um, so today we're going to talk about holiday horror and why Christmas themed horror in particular has fans of the genre in such a tizzy every holiday season. Um, you know, platforms like Shudder and even Tubi pushing Black Christmas. I saw advertisements for Silent Night, Deadly Night all over social media. Everybody's watching these movies. Um, and today we're going to talk about why. Um, we are also, um, I was going to do a separate video, but I'll just combine them into one video, talk about my favorite Yuletide slasher, Black Christmas. Um, so, again, I know it's late. It is, I think, today is the 28th. Um, <laughs> so, we are three days post-Christmas this year, but if you ask me, as a fan of horror year-round, I feel like Christmas horror can and should be enjoyed year-round, um, specifically. Um, so, uh, and that's not just because uh, I tend to spend most of the latter part of the year sick every year. Uh, this is not new for me to have come down with. I was one of the lucky few to have ended up with all three of the major respiratory viruses going around this winter, um, and I had them all three at the same time. So, um, that would be, you know, be easy to, you know, oh, I, I spend most of December sick, that's, you know, that's why, no, here's, here's the reason why I love holiday slashers. Um, when I started my research for this episode, the resounding consensus was that people just seem to enjoy Christmas horror just in general across the board. Like, that it, it doesn't even for us, you know, for horror fans, that it doesn't have to be Christmas um, in order for um, these movies to be enjoyable and a large part of that is because obviously horror is going to give you an emotional break from this constant pressure during the holiday season to perform, to be merry, to be happy all the time, to, you know, to not be ungrateful, to not get fixated on what you don't have and focus on what you do have instead and all this. Um, and, uh, you know, I can see why uh, Christmas horror has increased in popularity in recent years. Um, the anticipation, the hype, and the turnout for David Harbour's Violent Night has been absolutely unreal. Un real like I thought the the hype for nope was was it's it's unreal it is absolutely unreal how you know the this post pandemic or I say post but anybody with a brain knows we're not post but you know what I mean um this pandemic um 
sort of phenomenon that people are getting more and more drawn to the horror genre as it tends to mimic real life more and more. Um, and that's so freaking fascinating to me. So fascinating to me um, to watch how sort of living our own real life horror movie scenario with COVID-19 has turned people into fans of a genre that maybe they wouldn't have otherwise been drawn to if COVID hadn't happened. I am still bitter that they replaced the cranberry with watermelon, but that is for another video. Because believe it or not, it is related to my late diagnosed autism and ADHD. Um, but anyway, um, when we think about like unrealistic seasonal expectations, like nobody's immune to the conditioning of society and how everybody thinks you're supposed to respond. Like, I'm Jewish, right? I was raised Jewish. I was confirmed. I had a bat mitzvah. I was confirmed. And even I, you know, when I started, you know, joining families that did have Christmas traditions, I realized that even though I never experienced Christmas until I got into college and beyond, even I had an unrealistic expectation of what the holiday season was supposed to encompass. So like, that says a lot if even the Jewish kids are absorbing these performative messages about the holiday season. And that, I think to me that says something about this visceral, sort of drive in the opposite direction, you know, this fascination with these stories that don't tippy-toe around the merriment and the toxic positivity and aren't afraid to say, you know, fuck you sometimes, Christmas sucks, and here's why. Like, I mean, Krampus is the biggest example I can think of. Of, of, you know, of that, like, I think that Krampus is 100% a more accurate representation of how the majority of people feel about Christmas, about spending time with family, about in-laws during the holiday season, all of that, like, as far as, like, a social commentary, I absolutely love Krampus and I have and I actually have a podcast episode um, that I can link you to um, on the screen here um, where I talk about how Krampus would be a better motivator for better behavior during the holiday season than Santa Claus is. Um, the other big reason for my love of seasonal slasher stories is that Okay, so the only reason why people don't find the stories like A Christmas Carol and a wonderful It's a Wonderful Life absolutely horrifying is because they're not labeled horror. Okay? Let's think about it for a second. How is an elderly miser being haunted into living a more generous life any different, really, conceptually than Jigsaw attempting to murder trap his victims into living a more grateful existence. It's no different. There's no difference, if you think about it conceptually. The only difference is the execution and the stigma that comes along with something being labeled a horror movie and being pigeonholed into that genre. You're fine with enjoying these, like, and It's a Wonderful Life. Yeah, yeah, Merry Christmas, we're gonna show you 
what it would be like if you didn't exist. Look at how happy everyone is. Look at how wonderful everyone's life is without you. Like, I, I've, maybe it's the autism talking, but I've never understood how that was supposed to motivate him to be a better person. Like, okay, y'all are happier that I don't exist. Like, cool, deuces. <laughs> I, I just, yeah, I don't understand why those stories aren't called for what they are, right? If it quacks like a duck and walks like a duck and looks like a duck, it's a duck, whether that duck wants to be labeled a duck or not, right? You feel me? The Killer Santa story, Silent Night, Deadly Night. This is such a freaking, this fact freaks me up every time I hear it, right? Silent Night, Deadly Night, on its original run in theaters, spent a mere 10 days, 10 days in theaters, before collapsing under the backlash of, you know, the whole Killer Santa thing. Yet in those 10 days, it more than doubled its money back and has since enjoyed a massive cult following within the horror community. Okay, that I think I remember reading somewhere that they made that movie for $750, $750, and in the 10 days that it was in theaters, it made 2.5 million. Like, Holiday horror is relatable. Whether the Puritans who are, you know, anti evil Santa, whatever. <laughs> um, whether they want to admit it or not. Um, and, uh, you know, if we think, if we think about, like, like I said, in the, you know, in the wake of, you know, the... <laughs> my cat, she has been having the run of the house since my kids have been on vacation and I'm starting to regret it. Um, but, uh, as I said, you know, I think that people, you know, since the pandemic, people are coming more aware of what it means to be performative and you know what it means to genuinely want to be there for someone and to be with someone you know during the holiday season um, and you know and I think something that you know y'all need to reckon with if you have issues with you know the blasphemy of holiday horror you know let's reckon with that like it makes it easier to work through the big emotions that you have around certain things to you know to to watch to watch horror to associate horror and the holiday season is to give people an outlet that they normally wouldn't have to work through how they feel about those things and that's important um hugely, you know, massively important. Um, and, uh, I think, uh, that sort of breakdown or, like, juxtaposition of the performative aspects of the holiday with the horror aspects of the film, um, or why movies like, it's why Black Christmas is so popular, okay? Black Christmas, first of all, is the OG original slasher. It has all of the elements of Jello that Halloween has, but it was just, it was done four years earlier, right? Black Christmas came out in 1974. Um, and I feel like this is the perfect, this is the perfect holiday horror if you think about it in terms of what I just said about giving people the opportunity to work through 
difficult, big emotion. So Black Christmas is a holiday slasher starring traumatized loser wife Olivia Hussey and future Lois Lane Margot Kidder. Uh, this story follows a group of sorority sisters and their house mother Miss Mac as they are stalked through prank phone calls by a mysterious unknown presence. Um, the thing that I love the most about this movie is that it gets really dark um, in that it is actually, uh, so this movie takes place in 1974, the year that Roe v. Wade was passed through the Supreme Court. Um, and it includes kind of the crux of the storyline is that the final girl, Jess, um, is, you know, at the beginning of the movie, she lets her boyfriend know she's pregnant, he, but she doesn't have the same desire that he does to settle down and start a family. She wants to keep going to school and, you know, and do something different, you know, not just be pigeonholed into being a wife and a mother. And this leads her to erroneously believe that it, her boyfriend is the one that's making the harassing phone calls. Um, and so you've got this super dark storyline, right? That's set against a backdrop of the holidays, right? The majority of the action in the original. This movie has had two remakes, right? You wanna talk about something being massively, massively popular. The 2019 remake essentially has nothing in common with the original other than the name of the movie and the fact that they sort of get these, you know, weird phone calls or whatever and they all happen to be in a sorority, but it's essentially nothing like the original. But people still ate it up. That is how popular this story, this movie is. And, uh... You know, and that's, it's interesting because this is part of the reason why I like um, pop punk music, um, specifically Motion City Soundtrack, because there are some really, really genuinely, disturbingly dark themes in that music, in Justin Pierre's music specifically. And then the music is this like synth pop, like upbeat, make you want to dance kind of music. And this is the, I think that Christmas horror, this movie in particular, the way that the cinematography is done, the way the sets are designed um, in particular, is like the film equivalent of that kind of music. Um, and. I absolutely love the way that it makes you uncomfortable. I harp on this a lot, and I'm going to continue to harp on this. I absolutely love things that make you sit with your discomfort. I have a video that I'm probably going to post before this um, about analog horror and liminal space. Sitting with discomfort and being forced to sit in emotions that you don't like that make you feel weird or gross and being forced to think about that and unpack that for yourself is why I love horror. It's why I, it's why I exist as a creator, right? I'm not here to baby people. I am here to make people look at themselves in the mirror. I'm not here to say, oh, you can look away. If you don't like what you see, it's okay. I, you know, no, I'm here to hold your face to the mirror and make you look, whether you like it or not. Um, and so many, that's why I am hated, right? Because I do the work. And here's the thing, I do the work in private, right? I have a journal and I read a frick of a lot of books. And, you know, so you don't see me do the work, but I do the work. Uh, so if people try to tell me that I'm wrong or come at me, you know, whatever, it's just, it's a little bit, no. Um, 
so that's going to be um, where the channel's going in the future. I still have so much to talk about um, as far as the history of horror. I, um, I recently, oh my god, I discovered Tubi, where there's tons and tons of free horror. Um, I still, I want to keep going on ABC's of Fright. I have at least B and C, like, somewhere floating around that just need to be edited. I don't know what's going on with that. But I definitely, you know, I know I've talked about not niching down, but the horror content, I think, is, is a little bit more of where I want to go. Um, it's not that I don't enjoy making neurodivergent and autistic-related content, but... That's a huge part of why I'm burned out on social media, is just people don't want to hear when they're wrong. Being wrong isn't comfortable, it doesn't feel good, but pushing off that feeling is just, I just I'm so, I'm over it. I want to surround myself with people who are willing to look themselves in the mirror and say, yeah, no, I still have a lot of stuff inside that I need to unpack. Um, and I haven't been able to find those people on social media yet, so we'll see. Um, but uh, there's definitely, um, I think the next horror-related episode I want to make um, is... Oh, gosh, I don't know. Um, I still have to talk about Chucky. I still want to talk about sequels. Um... I think maybe I will do my episode on um, sequels because Scream 6 is coming up and I have to say I there's a lot of expectations that I have going into this film after seeing all the stuff with Nev Campbell and her getting, you know, essentially ousted from the movie because they refused to pay her. Like... I have criticized not sidelining Sidney Prescott for years. However, if they kill her off screen because they refuse to pay her actress enough money to make it lucrative for her to return, I am going to riot in the streets. I already do not have any hope that they will bring Stu Mocker back. Like, and I'm sick of having conversations with people who say that's not possible. So if you think that it's not possible that Stu lived through the end of Scream, the first Scream, that's great. I don't care. I don't care. Because I firmly believe that he is alive, that he could be alive. Um, and I really believe that Wes Craven would have wanted to bring him back if he had, if he was still alive, um, because that was his intention for Scream Three before it got fucked up by Columbine. Um, as if there isn't enough to be angry with those fuckers about for you know murdering thirteen people. Um, they essentially they essentially disrupted an entire movie franchise because of what they did. Um, so anytime somebody wants to say that mass shootings in the U.S. don't have a ripple effect on fucking anything, you know, beyond, you know, politics, let this be a fucking lesson to you. Yes, they fucking do. Mass shootings have the potential to cause complete cultural upsets. Anyway, that being said, I think absolutely 100% the next episode of Horror Corner with Jess Starling is going to be horror sequels. Why they do work, why they don't work, um, which ones are my favorites, which ones work the best, and which ones kind of flop the hardest. So stay tuned, make sure you subscribe. I, I really hate to ask if you are subscribed, please make sure you ring the notification bell because I do not plan on, I mean, I'm trying, I'm freaking trying so hard 
but I do not anticipate being able to maintain a regular upload schedule. Um, I was pretty much set back to square one after I was sick. So, um, I hate to say it, but please, please, please. <laughs> and um, I'm gonna go and see about a script for my holiday sequel episode, so you maybe don't have to wait so long next time for my next upload. I will see you guys in the next one.